as a series of lectures which will be directed towards the most expected questions in the NEET PG 2025. I will be going through this series again. Now these are a new set of questions and this is what we will be expecting in future examinations as well. Now the question first from anatomy from a branch histology as you can see the question reads that a neat next PG aspirant is asked to have a look at the image below. The type of epithelium. So we have an image and we are asked to identify the type of epithelium first. And then this type of epithelium is present in. That is the crux of the question. So this is an epithelium in which you can see tall cells columnar with the central nucleus as over here. So this is one cell, this is another cell and you can see it is a tall columnar epithelium. Now the options given are endothelium of blood vessels, thyroid follicle, germinal epithelium of ovary and the gallbladder. So basically the question tests your knowledge of disposition of the epithelium, a very fundamental question in physiology but very frequently asked. Now, as far as your knowledge is concerned, we go to the option first. We scan the options. Option one, endothelium of blood vessels. The endothelium of blood vessels is not an option because endothelium of blood vessels is lined by squamous epithelium. Very important. Classic squamous epithelium lining the endothelium of blood vessels. The thyroid follicles are characterized by the presence of cuboidal epithelium. So, cuboidal epithelium is the important feature of germinal epithelium of ovary and the thyroid follicles. Again, not a correct option. Now, germinal epithelium of ovary, I just mentioned it already, so this is not an option as well. Now, as far as the gallbladder is concerned, you know the gallbladder, the gallbladder is a part of the gastrointestinal tract and it is characterized, the histology of the gallbladder is characterized by highly folded mucosa and along the mucosa you have the columnar epithelium and the columnar epithelium is the tall columnar so very important characteristically the feature of the gallbladder is the tall columnar epithelium so the correct option over here is the gallbladder so that's important that's how you arrive at the diagnosis or the answer now second question is from microbiology now, a 22-year-old male has abdominal distension with malabsorption. So, these are the clues. Causation is by the below shown organism. So, we have an organism which is shown below. So, this is the organism where which is shown. Now, it is likely causative for. That it's an indirect question. It does not tell you the organism only. It tells you the most likely disease as a result of the infestation by this organism is rectal polyps, GR disease, peptic ulcer, typhoid. Now import, so this is an image based question. First of all, you have to recognize this. So this is a figure showing Giardia. So Giardia lamella. So that, that you know now. And again, the clues in the question, abdominal distension and malabsorption. GRDS is, is specifically known for causing malabsorption and abdominal distension as a result of gaseous distension. So rectal polyps are not a feature of GRDS. So GRDS is the correct answer and rectal polyps do not are not caused by this entity. The peptic ulcer uh, not at all because peptic ulcers in many cases H. pylori, helicobacter pylori, that is something else. The shape does not resemble a helicobacter pylori organism. And typhoid, salmonella. Salmonella does not resemble this shape. So basically, this is Giardia, Lamlia. So the organism is Giardia, Lamlia. And it causes giardiasis and you should know the symptomatology of giardiasis and it is one of the important causes of malabsorption. So this is the question from microbiology. Now here is a clinical scenario. 
from ophthalmology, a 12-year-old child presents with tremors, gait disturbances, and dysarthria, a slit limb. Now, an ophthalmological examination in the form of slit limb examination is done, and it shows casal flesher rings. What is the most likely diagnosis? Hemochromatosis, Wilson's disease, acute hepatitis, primary biliary cholangitis. So over here, the uh, figure is given, which itself, it is given in the question itself that there are casal flesh rings. And out of these, the answers. Now, you know, scanning through the options, again, hemochromatosis, that is an iron overload condition. And I don't think that uh, we have got corneal features uh, in the form of any ophthalmological defect in case of hemochromatosis. Now, acute hepatitis. Acute hepatitis uh, does not cause much of a clinical symptomatology like tremors, gait disturbances, dysarthria. And primary biliary cholangitis, no, it is something else. It is concerned with prurites and uh, a cholestatic pattern in the liver and not ophthalmological conditions as uh, shown. But this is a characteristic question uh, on uh, testing your ability to know KF rings. And sometimes questions are simply asked on the basis of your knowledge about the specific features of certain diseases. As far as hemochromatosis is concerned, it is wrong. Acute hepatitis is wrong. Primary biliary cirrhosis is wrong. Wilson's disease. Now, Wilson's disease is due to accumulation of copper and Wilson's disease is hepatolenticular degeneration. Why? Because the liver, in the liver, there are the copper deposits and the lenticular nucleus as a part of basal ganglia in which copper deposition occurs. And because this lenticular nucleus is concerned with movement, so that is why the gait disturbances and there is copper deposition in the form of Casal pleasure rings, which are seen on slit limb examination. So you have to know Wilson's disease, copper accumulation, or hepatolenticular degeneration, and that is important. So knowing a combined, uh, having a combined concept of pathology, medicine, and ophthalmology, you arrive at this. And there are certain important features, diseases which have got some important features. So you have to characteristically uh, know about the features of these D and KF rings are very, very, very specific and sensitive of Wilson's disease. Now, a question from orthopedics. A young male has been having severe low back ache, so low back pain or back ache for the last five months. So it is severe, but it has been there chronically for the last five months. It is not since last five hours. He has been taking painkillers for a long period without any relief. So that's a very important. MRI scan is shown and most likely causes. Now the MRI is shown over here. Options given are hematogenous osteomyelitis, metastatic deposits, multiple disc desiccations, and osteopetrosis. Now I would just like to magnify this image over here. And uh, from my knowledge, I can just see that this is the spinal cord. And over here, you can see that this is the vertebra. And this, these are the IV discs, intervertebral discs. So over here, you can see a protrusion of the disc. Over here, you see a protrusion of the disc. Over here, also, this is a protrusion of the disc. Uh, uh, unmasked by my previous uh, uh, lining. So you can see there is a disc protru uh, protrusion over here, there's a disc protrusion over here, and there's a disc protrusion over here. So it is basically going back to the options. Hematogenous osteomyelitis. Hematogenous osteomyelitis would not present in a similar manner with uh, for five months. So it is not acute hematogenous osteomyelitis. Metastatic deposits, I cannot see in the figure metastatic deposits anywhere along the bone, along the vertebra. The vertebrae, uh, vertebrae are characteristically fine. So there is nothing much in the vertebrae as you can see, I've enlarged it. Now, osteopetrosis, uh, alberg schonberg's disease, uh, marble bone disease in that you have got absolutely different bones will be more white because of the 
osteopathic element. So this is not osteopetrosis, this is not osteomyelitis hematogenous acute, which is usually caused by staph or it's not the tubercular organ, uh, osteomyelitis, which is chronic. Uh, the metastatic deposits from any of the malignant uh, malignancies elsewhere, there's not a history suggesting that. So the correct answer is, and it's also, uh, it's also test your ability to identify these grass lesions, whether it is the ultrasound, CT, MRI, or the radiographs. So very important. Now a question from radiology. The scan below shows a uterine malformation. So there's a uterine malformation. It is in itself mentioned that there's a problem in the uterus. So what is the uh, pathology? The options given are uterus bicornis unicollis, uterine fibroid, uterine hyperplasia, uterine agenesis. Now I just enlarged this figure and this is the area of the uterus. So this is the uterus. So there is no question of uterine agenesis. You can well demarcate the uterus. So the option D is gone. Not a correct answer. Uterine hyperplasia. No, the uterus is uh, fine and uh, there is no hyperplasia. Uh, it's not atritic at any part. Now uterine fibroid. Fibroid would just present as a mass lesion uh, somewhere. Any mass over here, any mass, leomyoma, um, uh, B9 a mass in the uterus, no, it, it, uh, it, is, it, it is not there. So the important thing is that this is not a leomyoma so, or a uterine fibroid, and, uh, but the important thing is that over here, this is a uterus which is having two hearts, one heart, two heart but the cervix is one so it is basically bicornis so bicornis and unicornis means two horns but the single cervix so why you have to remember the letter y and it is the single cervix and these are the two horns of the uterus so it is uterus bicornis unicornis so very important deformity of the uterus and you have to remember to recognize this important thing now the question from dermatology, a 44 year old developed scaly eruption on extensor aspect of his limbs as shown. So it is shown over here. These are the lesions. These are the lesions. These are the lesions, multiple lesions. He responded to calcipotriol treatment. So there's a positive response to some medicine. Most likely lesion is scabby, psoriasis, pampigus, and lupus. Now, uh, dermatology, a bit complicated, but you have to uh, be able to recognize those lesions and the clues are given there. Number one, the option clue is scaly. Scaly. And this is a very, very important. Scaly lesions are characteristic of psoriasis hyperproliferation extensor aspect uh, psoriatic lesions are characteristically seen on extensor aspect unless and unless there's a condition known as inverse psoriasis which may be seen on the other aspect as well and the limbs the most e e effective are the limbs and he responds to calcipotriol so calcipotriol you know this uh, analog of uh, vitamin a and calcipotriol uh, is one of the drugs used in treatment of psoriasis in addition to other drugs uh, like the coal tar which was used in the past and high response rates to calcipotriol. Scabby is not an answer. Scabies would have had a history of uh, uh, infection among uh, certain, I mean to say, places where there's a much of clubbing hostels or in a classroom a child having and very pruritic uh, lesions on the skin um, especially over there and there will be a lot of itchy associated with it so it is not scabies psoriasis i leave for the time pampicus pampicus with, with would present with um, uh, i mean to say bolus lesions and they would be very painful and there will be oral manifestations as well uh, oral ulcers but these lesions would be painful and widespread and having a very acute course no there's nothing like that uh, suggestive from the question headings lupus vulgaris 
which is a form of cutaneous tuberculosis and there is no history of such there is no test indicating that it is something like of a uh, tubercular lesion but it is classically the psoriasis the psoriasis is uh, the correct answer out of all the clues you cannot get uh, clues more than these uh, this is uh, i think the examiner here has been lenient to show to give you so many clues in a single uh, question but uh, you can be having lesser clues in the uh, question and uh, then you have to arrive that would be more difficult to level uh, of a question this is a simple question and uh, my point is that how this is how you arrive at the diagnosis of the questions and you expect questions like these in your neat pg and fmg ahead so this is how uh, we arrive at the diagnosis so i wish that there are a few days left for the neat pg examinations and you just work hard and give a spike of an effort to your uh, uh, preparation and i thank you a lot and wish you best of luck for your exams thanks a lot